Hey guys, so I just want to go over Chaturanga Dandasana today for you. I'm going to break down the mechanics of the posture. It is the low plank position it's seen in the vast majority of power classes, of vinyasa classes, even in interval or hatha classes, maybe just in a slightly different variation. But my goal is to maybe decipher some of the cues that teachers use um, and shapes and help you understand mechanically what's happening in your body and how best to perform this posture to keep yourself nice and strong and stable and maybe not overcompensate with the low back. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you how I practice it and then I'm gonna break down all of the the actions that are happening and face you so you can see the shape and then introduce some of the variations that you can use if you're not practicing this high version or maybe that you are and you notice that some of the things that I point out maybe you have been compensating with and you need to just pull back a little and strengthen yourself before you continue. Okay, so first I'm just going to demonstrate. Okay, my first action here is going to be externally rotating the upper arm. So the humerus bone is the bone here and our latinus is actually attached on the top of this humerus bone and pull it inward. Right, so it pulls it this way, and this hunches our shoulders forward. So by countering that action, by externally rotating, we're pulling the shoulders back, and we're using the muscles around the shoulder blade, and then the further muscles in that are attaching to the spine. Okay, so externally rotate. And this is where that cue biceps forward comes in with a lot of teachers. This is what they're asking you to do, to spin the bicep forward a little. Now, I like to counter this action just slightly by taking my radius and maybe internally rotating or just build that tension in my mind as if it's internally rotating. It just feels stronger in the shoulder for me. But this is optional down here, so we wanna really focus on external rotation. And what this does here is track the elbow back rather than out, okay? So external rotation tracks the elbow back nice and healthy. The next action, once we get down with the external rotation, is going to be moving the scapula away from the ear, so depressing them down the back. Okay, so from here, external, and pull them away. And then we want to broaden them a little, so protract them. This pulls them apart. From here, we lower into our chaturanga. Okay, maybe lift up into our up dogs. Okay, so a variation of this would be on your knees, especially if you don't have the strength in the shoulders yet. So we still come from that plank position. Then we drop our knees so we know that our back is nice and strong. Externally rotate, depress, and broaden and then lower down. And then you can continue to lower and come up into the cobra pose or maybe the up dog pose. Okay, now I'm gonna take this posture and face it towards you so that you can watch my elbows. My elbows aren't gonna pinch in all the way, okay? I want the elbows to come out just a little and work on broadening the shoulders. If we pinch them in too much, chances are we're slowing the lower, right, which a lot of people use to compensate. And the elbows actually can kind of get in the way and pinch and brush against the ribs and stop you. But again, if you don't have the strength to pause the chaturanga, just use your knees. Um, it's much healthier. But you see, my elbows come out a little. They don't flare out because I'm not dropping the shoulders using the lats or allowing the pec muscles to sink forward. I'm allowing um, the elbows just to come out a little naturally so that I can use the strength of the shoulder muscles rather than that weird compensation that happens in the lat. Again, I'm going I'm to take it from an angle again, too, so you can see the elbow shape. So another huge cue is shoulder head to elbow, 90 degree, which they call an optimal... That was a bee on my head. I'm allergic to bees. Thank goodness you were just looking at my sweat. Anyways, so an optimal angle is what we call it in maybe more of the fitness world and orthopedic world or biomechanically. But if you are not quite strong enough to drop without rolling the shoulders forward in that 90 degree angle it's healthier to peel up a little above it and chances are maybe you are strong enough and you're slightly lower than it or maybe your deltoid just looks like because you have a bigger muscle in the front maybe physically it just looks bigger you have shorter humerus bones which i do so to look at a student and try to find some sort of arbitrary angle or shape or image in your mind or a cue that you've been told to repeat might not work for all body types so we always want to work on the muscle and the joint action and what suits the individual person doing it so i'm just going to show you what i mean by the angle okay we're not coming here clearly because then my shoulders are rotating down but maybe we're a little above 90 maybe we're at it 
Okay, so it's just really going to depend on the strength and the wrap of the shoulders if you can maintain the external rotation, the depression, and the slight protract that's happening in the upper back. That elbow angle might not matter quite as much um, as you've been led to believe. So if you like this type of information, I know it's a longer video, so bookmark it, save it, pause it, play it, maybe videotape yourself um, to see your shape and your strength. A lot of times visually seeing what we're doing instead of just another person cueing us really helps so that we know where we need to maybe break down the posture, work a little harder, or change it up. Um, but I have a workshop coming up on October 20th at FLY. This is what we are going to be going over, about 10 to 15 popular postures and what's happening in the body, um, different ways for you to practice it. Not one pose looks the same in every body. And we're also going to introduce lots of props, maybe to modify or to amplify or to help our bodies feel what they can feel optimally in the poses versus what we've been told it needs to look like. Okay?